Hey, 4 by e fans, you are going to see chargers like these showing up in a lot of places all across the United States, Canada, and uh, one of the questions that gets asked quite often in the 4 by e fans group is if there's a converter to convert from what this is, this is called CCS, and if you see CCS on there, that's what that is, and if you'll note, that looks a lot like a J1772 on the top. And so what a lot of people have assumed is that there's some sort of converter to go from that to this, but that is not how that works. Um, the uh, 4xe does not support what's called DC fast charging. Uh, we only can do AC charging in here. And what CCS does in those bottom two ports down there, that's where the DC comes from. Communications still come from the top, just like it normally would if you were charging with a J1772. But if you look in there, you can see the top two pins don't have any metal in there, which is where the AC comes from on your top two tin pins on your J1772. Instead, we put DC voltage on these bottom two pins, and that's where DC fast charging happens with CCS. Now, this is actually kind of... Uh, it's going to become an old technology soon because a lot of manufacturers are adopting the NACS standard for DC fast charging, which formerly was referred to as a Tesla charger. But um, now that more people than Tesla are going to adopt that standard, it's referred to as an ACS. And again, that won't be compatible on the existing 4xe's. But uh, I would imagine uh, since GM and Ford have adopted the NACS for their standard, eventually we'll start seeing 4xe's come out with um, the uh, NACS plug because I do believe at this point, I think Stellantis has announced that they will adopt NACS too. And that's just in North America. Europe has a completely different thing. If you open up a charge port on a European 4xe, it already has their standard, which is uh, AC and DC charging both built into the one. So there you go. That's uh, if, you, if you see one of these and you think, wow, well, that'd be a great place to charge, um, no, it isn't. And the reason for that is that plug-in hybrids, for the most part, it would be kind of uh, a waste of time to add DC fast charging to a vehicle that only has a 21 mile electric range because on average, I mean, if you have a gas engine, you're just gonna keep going on a trip. You're not gonna stop every 20 miles and plug in and charge. Uh, the only plug-in hybrid that I can think of in North America that ha that supports DC fast charging is the uh, Mitsubishi Outlander. Uh, there's a plug-in hybrid version of that that does have DC fast charging, but I've spoken with a few owners and they don't use it because you know, you only go short distance, you plug in and charge. You go short distance, plug in and charge. When you've got an ad, a gas engine that you can just keep on going, plus the added expense to the vehicle to include, you know, either some sort of switch gear or something, you know, a CCS port, you know, whatever, for something that you're just not really going to use that often. So it doesn't make a whole lot of sense in a plug-in hybrid that has such a short range. Now, if you go to something like the uh, the Ram, what's it called, the the new Ram electrified platform that's coming out, I, I would assume that thing is going to support DC fast charging because it has more electric range, but um, there again also has a gas engine. So you know, do you want to take the time to do that? And the other part of that is when companies are installing these DC fast charging stations, they're not installing them every 20 miles on the highway. They're spacing them out every couple hundred miles because most vehicles that support DC fast charging can go longer distances. So it really doesn't make that much sense, you know, in North America where we're already so far spread out and we're so behind the eight ball with the number of DC fast charging stations that we have available to us doesn't make sense to, to space them out or short distances. It makes more sense to spread them out farther. So hope that answers questions of why you can't charge the Wrangler 4xe at a lot of these stations. If you're using an app like PlugShare or the ChargePoint app, you can go in and sort by uh, only and tell it to only show you the J1772 charging stations that are level two charging stations. So, and, and by the way, sometimes this is referred to as level three. 
There for a while, the industry didn't want to refer to this as level three charging. They wanted to refer to it as DC fast charging. But it seems like since so many people started calling it level three, the industry kind of threw up their hands and said, screw it, we'll just call it level three charging. But it is different because it is DC current and, and it's not AC like what we have with level one and level two charging. So uh, there, I nerded out a little too much about charging today. Thanks for watching.